Hi guys, and check out what we have today. This has only literally come out on the 1st of January. So this is an absolute brand new release from Seiko. And I think it is an absolute stunner and something so different that I've got to applaud Seiko for doing this kind of watch. I think it is an absolute stunning watch and I yeah, congratulate them for actually doing this. What it is, is the reference number, sorry, I should say Seiko SPB359J1. And this is to celebrate the 110 years because back then in 1913, Seiko released their first ever wristwatch, um, the Laurel. And yeah, they've just done a reinterpretation of it here, which I think is fantastic. Now, before I get too far into a review, I've got to say a big thank you to Ryan and the team over at Francis and Gay of Coventry for allowing me to review this watch. If you're based in the Midlands, honestly, it'd be rude not to pop in and have a look. Uh, if you're a little bit further afield, you can always um, go on their website and they'll be able to get you a watch post that ASAP. So what makes this watch special? It's a two and a half thousand uh, limited edition. So only two and a half thousand worldwide. And it's just basically, I say it's harping back to the old days. This is just so good especially nowadays with watches everything's got to have ceramic bezels it's got to have loom it's got to have all this this strips all that away and goes back to the essence of what a timepiece actually is or was even and it just looks superb for it now sizes wise we are talking 37.5 millimeters by i measure 13 millimeters tall the lug to lug is 39.5 and the lug grip Lit, sorry, the lug width. Get ready for this one. 11 mil. It's so cute. So yeah, 11 mil. But don't let that put you off because the actual strap size on this, if you measure it up here, it's coming out at 21 and down here down to 20. So it doesn't feel like that. Obviously, it makes changing different straps a little bit awkward. You have to get them custom made, but it does look fantastic for it. I don't mind. So the dial. The dial gets this font design from the original back in the day with the red 12 and this lovely old fashioned font. It is printed on this gorgeous enameled dial. Now enamel dialing costs a heck of a lot more than normal dialing because the simple fact is they have a big failure rate normally with enamel dials. So they are, they are a lot harder to produce. Now the hands on this are beautifully um, thermal blued and they just look superb they look really really do look the part i love how thin and elegant they are now on the original uh, 1913 model this subdial down here was for constant reading seconds but on this it's the actual date indicator so it's showing there the 11th as we do have a center mounted um second hand over here, we have the power reserve indicator. If I wind this onion style crown, so if you can see it, see it start to move towards the 40, it will actually go to this point here. And that is a 45 hour power reserve on this. Now it is an automatic, but you do have the option to manual wind, which is somehow strangely satisfying. Now, as we, obviously there's no loom on this watch, but it's not that kind of watch. As we come out, we have this lovely, um kind of uh, box style crystal going on here it is actually a sapphire crystal with ar coating the actual case of the watch is a it looks more like a pebble style like an old-fashioned pocket watch we do have a screw down case back on here it is solid and does carry the limited edition number on the back i'm not going to take it all apart to actually get to the back of a watch you'd undo this slip it through and then you can get to the back of a watch if so desired it has got water resistancy, but only the bare minimal, so 50 meters. It's not a screw down crown. It is just as it is, and you can, say, manually wind it. But it just looks so right, I think. Now, the movement in this is the 6R27. Now, I put this on the time grapher, and I was very pleasantly surprised. Uh, surprised. We were talking, I think it was zero to one second, uh, beta was okay at 0.3 amplitude was a tiny bit low but it didn't matter because that just ran a nice smooth line so it's a it does seem to be a very good timekeeper i'm just yeah 
I think it does look the part. You also get it in this nice wooden box. So if I zoom out a little bit now, the wooden box itself, it's lovely. It feels like balsa um, and it's got a really nice, nice feel to it. Very, very nice. So there you go. Now, let me put it on my wrist so you get an idea how it looks. So my wrist size is seven and a quarter. Quick wrist check. I'm wearing a Brightling Colt 41. Now discontinued actually. On one of the new John Keeley straps, which I think are absolutely stunning and insanely good value. So there you go on there. Bob, um, who's now, now moved over here. He's wearing the Bremont Jaguar, which has come in for review. So that'll be quite an interesting one. Now let's put this on my wrist. Here we go. And there you go. 37.5 mil, but all dial. Those big, long hands. I think it looks absolutely cool. Now, it looks like it's standing tall, but it isn't really. It's just because you have the strap on the lower part here. Normally, if I was to put like, you know, if you had a big, chunky strap like that on there, it wouldn't look quite so high at all. But it just looks superb. I think that's a really, really good looking watch. So, yeah. What do you, oh, should also point out on the clasp here, we do have a signed Seiko um, pin, uh, sorry, uh, clasp back there. So it is, the leather strap itself does feel quite nice. It's a real nice feel to it. So honestly, I think, yeah, hats off to Seiko for doing a watch like this. I think it is absolutely stunning. But will it sell? Will you, you know, would you guys be interested in a watch like this? Because it is quite, you know, it's definitely different from the norm. I personally think it's absolutely stunning. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Okay, then. all the best. And most importantly, stay safe out there. Bye.